Hey everybody, welcome to the third video of the 1913 Duesenberg cycle cart frame build series. Uh, the last two videos, uh, we've done these are pretty quick. The last just a few weeks I've been working on this. Uh, just in case you don't know, there's a quarantine going on right now. This is uh, today's April 7th, 2020, and the coronavirus is kind of going crazy right now. So uh, I'm working from home today, so I've got a little bit of time to do a few things that um, I wouldn't be able to do. So I'm working on this today. Uh, my dad's gonna come over in a little bit. We're gonna weld up the frame, so that's a big step. Uh, the frame is ready to weld. I've got it on the on the bench. I've got a few. I need to clamp it down a little bit more. Right now, it's uh, pretty well all lined up, squared up, ready to go. I've got the table marked. I've got the pieces marked. So, I, and I'll show you what that looks like in a minute. But uh, in the last two videos, the first video we did the uh, Z of the frame. That's not required for cycle cars, of course. That's just what we're doing on this one because that's what the original car would have had um, to emulate the Duesenberg 1913 Duesenberg race car. Then on the second video, we did the front uh, spring shackles and buttoned up the front of the frame to give a nice slope, a rounded pitch to it. Um, you can see that right here. So it turned out pretty good. Um, we got three cross members on here, a very small one up front, which is a 7 8 uh, piece of tubing going over the top of the bolts to hold these shackles on or uh, welded the little nuts on the backside of the shackles so that when we put the bolt through, uh, there's a, like a capture nut sort of a thing. Um, it's come together pretty well. I'm pretty happy with the results so far. Uh, the trick now is to keep this thing from moving around on the welding table. Uh, when you weld, sometimes the metal shrinks and the, the, the things get askewed, either, either this way or they'll bend or twist. Uh, we're gonna try to strap it down. I might even weld um, some pieces onto the top of it to kind of keep it from moving. Um, that's the idea, keep, it, keep the whole thing steady. Because uh, you, as you weld, things do shrink and move, so we'll try to avoid that. That'll be the challenge. If I weld slowly enough, and I'm patient enough, which I'm, I tend not to be patient. I tend to go faster than I probably should. Um, so I'm going to try really hard this time to cool, let things cool down before I try to put another weld in and that sort of thing. So uh, let me show you what this looks like on the table. Okay, so starting at the front, this is the uh, cross member. Uh, there's a, a nut underneath there that's welded in place. And then I put this 7 8 inch piece of tubing over it. It's got a little bit of clearance, so when I weld this, hopefully I can grind that down and make it nice and uh, almost invisible, look like it's uh, uh, attached with a bolt. And then, I didn't show you in the video, but because of the shape of this front end, you know, it goes from two inches and it starts sloping down to three inches, right where this cross member's at, it's like two and a half inches. So I had to section this, this cross member. What I did was I cut a half inch out of it and then welded it back together. Um, it's not going to be visible. The body work is going to be here, so this little bit of welding and stuff. I smoothed it down pretty good, but a little bit of welding is showing uh, where the weld is at. If it does end up showing, we can always body filler that because this is a little bit... Uh, it's ground nice and flush now, but you can see the little line. That'll show up in your paint, but if it's covered by body panels, it doesn't matter. Uh, so I've got it clamped side to side. I've got a piece of 2x4 underneath it because that, that supports it under here. And then I've got that clamped down with a piece of metal going across because my clamps aren't quite deep enough to reach the frame in the center of the table. The table is 24 inches wide. And then I've got a piece of scrap metal that is clamped down on the frame where it meets the table and it's at across kind of an angle. Uh, I was watching some videos online on Eastwood, I think it was, and they did this sort of a thing to kind of keep a frame square. I might weld this and weld it over here as well. Hopefully to keep the frame from twisting. Uh, that's the idea. And then it's clamped back here as well. I've got everything marked. You see the little indexing marks. I marked the table so I can keep it nice and straight. At least that's the idea. Uh, there's a little line, maybe a little hard to see. I, I took a Sharpie once I laid it all out and had it measured. So I can, if it ever moves around, I can make sure it stays where it needs to be. Uh, when my dad gets here, he's going to bring some more 2x4s because I don't have any more. And support the back end, we'll clamp this down as well. And he's bringing the motor and all that sort of stuff so we can start working on the motor mount. So here in a little bit, we'll start welding on this thing. Uh, a few more clamps getting put in place and we'll start welding it. So anyway, that's just a, I don't know, that table's like eight feet long and two feet wide. So I got it pulled away from the wall so I can get to both sides of it. And uh, this will be a fun project. A couple tacks on here, just going around slowly, a couple small tacks. Got the uh, little cross members tacked down too, just to keep them from sliding around and moving. Uh, the back ones for letting them cool off in between doing more welding. I'm trying to be super patient, so hopefully this thing won't warp and move around on us. Right, we got a few more tacks in place on all the different spots. Kind of going around slowly. A little out of time. Did a little bit on the front one over here. It's looking pretty good. So 
and get some more going. So a little more progress on the well. It's got a few more spots to finish off. Uh, these don't have to look pretty because they're going to be hidden by the body work. Uh, let's see. That one's darn near done. This one's really close. These up here. I'll take a little cleaning up on these because these will be visible. But uh, coming along. So we got three sides of each cross member welded. Front and back and top of the front cross member. And the rear cross member. Remember, these don't have to be pretty. They just got to be welded. Get them plenty hot. And uh, you're good to go. I left my little uh, support bar. I kind of tacked it in place to kind of keep it from springing. We took the clamps off and... The frame did not move an inch, or not even any amount. It didn't spring, didn't sprang. It's still perfectly square, so pretty happy. Next thing to do is flip it over and weld the bottom. Okay, so a couple days ago we welded up the frame. I, I didn't show you the other side, but we, we did weld it all the bottom of it as well. I came back, kind of cleaned them up a little bit. Uh, the front cleaned up really well. It's going to look really, really good. And I'm really pleased with the front end of this thing. Um, so the next thing in the frame, and I normally do this earlier, but I didn't have the uh, bearings here. So I mocked up the bearings, drilled the holes for those. And the next thing I'm doing, I'm putting a brace basically in here so that the bolts won't crush this. Uh, when you mount your bearings, it's you know side loading and all that. So a lot of it's riding on that bearing. So we put, cut a little piece of, uh, I guess this is half inch square tubing. Cut it so it fits inside. And then uh, I'm gonna put the bolt through and then we're gonna tack those in place on the inside of the frame rail. So let me show you what that looks like here. So here is the square tubing uh, cut to fit inside the frame. And you got to clearance to make sure there's no, you know, little boogers and metals. Uh, take a file or a deburring tool like this. It's a deburring tool. Clean out everything around it. Uh, and this kind of slides right in the hole. Then your nut's going to go through it, your bolt rather. And we're going to make sure that it clearances so it doesn't interfere with this bearing race once this goes in here because of this little space here. Um, you want to make sure that those are out of the way of the frame. So we're going to put a tack weld in there and those will be secure so when you take the nuts and bolts out in and out it uh, won't be a problem. Here's one other thing that I've discovered after building cycle carts. Uh, we want to use nylocks on almost all these bolts so they don't rattle loose. But when you're doing your mock-up use normal nuts. Um, so you're not such a hard time threading, threading and unthreading things. So you put it on and off. It's a whole lot easier than using nylocks uh, when you're doing the mock-up. So use these for now. But then when you do your final build, use nylocks. Okay, so now we're going to weld these up. Okay, so we got the bearing kind of mocked up, and the little support pieces are in there. Kind of hard to see from that side. I'll go to the other side. Um, this little tack weld is all it took. You see the tack inside of there. And then on this side, a little bit hard to see because it's dark in there. Um, but the nuts and bolts go, or the bolts go straight through. No problem. And it'll take the tension off of this and keep this nice and strong. So when we put our bearings in there, and bolt it down this doesn't crush uh, some guys have put a piece of wood in there i find this to be a much simpler method um, and simple is always better now we got the bearings and it's time to go ahead and put in the axle uh, you can tell this is a used axle my dad acquired a completed cart that we weren't totally happy with the design that's why we're building a whole new cart but we're using almost all the parts off of it so uh Anyway, I might as well call this a cycle cart rescue project. So when you put these in on the bearings, you want to make sure you leave your bearings loose. Don't tighten these down. Just, you know, just kind of sitting in there is okay. Uh, you want these to be able to maneuver around. They're designed to maneuver um, the bearing, I mean. So once you slide your axle in, that'll all line it all up. Um, slide it into both sides. That kind of self-aligns these things. And there you go. So it's in nice and easy. And then when you go ahead and tighten these up, go around slowly to tighten them down once you've got it uh, measured. To the outside edges and then uh, for right now though we're just setting this up to mock up to get the motor area done i think we'll do the motor uh, mount in a separate video it's not really a standard motor mount i'm going to be doing it a little different than than standard but uh we'll film it anyway and show you how we're doing it so before we finish this video i thought i'd just give you a quick walk on the table here kind of get a look at what this looks like um since it's all finished up so there's the front end first cross section the Z. So we've made a lot of progress in just a couple weeks we've been working on this. Um, got a goal to get this done by August 20th for an event in Utah, so we're kind of uh, working where we can on it. The quarantine has allowed me a few extra hours during the week to work on it, so uh, hopefully make some pretty quick progress. So the next phase is to go ahead and do the motor area, get that finalized. Hey, thanks for watching this video. We'll call it the end of this video, uh, building the cycle cart frame. I've got a lot done on this one so far. Uh, we've got a little more to go. Um, 
motor mount and we'll get some other stuff done pretty quickly here. Uh, we'll get to about August 20th to get this thing done, so we're really thrashing on it. Uh, thanks for watching, and also this week we hit 1,000 uh, subscribers on YouTube, which is kind of a big deal uh, for 2020. I appreciate all the new subscribers, and thanks for watching. I hope these videos are helpful to you in building your cycle carts. If you have any questions, feel free to pipe up. Find me on Facebook and or on uh, the YouTube here. Feel free to ask any questions you might have about cycle carts. We've got lists and we've got plans we're happy to share with you. Uh, but again, if you haven't subscribed, uh, go ahead and please subscribe. That's uh, helpful to us. Thanks very much for watching. Have a great day.